Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We are 46 days away from the Mars window and we continue to supply our big Mars ship, the St. Louis. And in particular, we are going to need more uh, xenon gas. Uh, I clicked the wrong thing there. Xenon gas, we need 5 million units basically to supply our ion engines. We could consider adding more MH and NTO, but I don't think we need it. Uh, in fact, we were probably overdoing it with those tanks, so we're currently only using that for RCS, so I think we'll be all right there, but we may need more supplies. Uh, we do have a fair amount, but we calculated that we would need more if we want more Kerbals on board. So, we are going to deliver those, and probably the supplies are going to be delivered uh, en masse, so we don't have to move them manually like we did last time. I would also like extra thruster blocks up top there, but uh, that's secondary right now. I, I noticed that we have a whole lot of electric charge. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 digits of electric charge. So billions, and it goes, it, it's, it's high. I can only assume that this has something to do with KSB Interstellar, with its megajoule thing. And it has left us with a lot of electric charge. I certainly did not configure it that way. Um, it seems like the part that has all the electric charge is this part back here, the core for the NTP and solar electric propulsion. It has the nuclear reactors built in. So I guess, I guess KSB Interstellar has decided that with the nuclear reactors built in, it's going to need to put trillions of units of electric charge. I don't know. I don't understand it. I hope it doesn't cause any problems, but we are aware of this situation. Also, I apparently did not put MLI layers on that particular block, so the hydrogen is probably going to boil off pretty quickly. Uh, the boil off loss has been increasing. And yeah, anyway, so those are interesting issues that we have. But for now, let me get a supply vessel for the xenon gas and hopefully uh, also add the supplies. And, but it depends on what we can launch with the Orion carrier plane, right? So we will see what we can launch and probably we'll have multiple launches in this episode to get all the stuff here. Here we are with the launch of xenon gas to our Mars ship and we can carry 3.23 million units of xenon gas it looks like. So we're going to have to do part of the xenon gas delivery in the next launch, but we'll also launch some supplies with that, and we'll probably need more supplies than that will allow for. I also might want to send the water recycler. That'll cut down on the supplies we need, but we'll take a look at that. We're using the same hydrogen oxygen stage that we had before, except I've mod uh, modified it a little bit. So we are using steel aluminum lithium tanks instead of steel aluminum. I assume the steel is the outside skin and the aluminum is the inner structure that they have, like the stringers and all that business. And then we're switching to aluminum lithium on that. That makes it lighter. And I've also made it longer. The shadowing is still weird. And again, eventually I'll make it a fresh part in Blender, but I want to get the dimensions and everything right. Uh, so yeah, that is why we are still using the procedural parts. So with that, SAS on, throttle is up, and uh, that's that's okay, and that's not okay. <laughs> so we've got some fairings and other things in the wrong place now. Okay, that should be right. Always check staging after the fact. Ignition. And launch. A little bit of a sway on the platform. Still examining 1.12, but the problem is the EVAs, really. And I had some problem with the EVAs in 1.12. It seemed like they were not doing... The, the jetpacks were not doing what I expected them to do, so... That was a problem. Somebody else said they had the same problem with the EVA packs, so... I don't know what's going on there. It may be due to the way that Realism Overhaul wants to modify the EVA packs, and maybe if I undo that and just use the EVA propellant that the stock game has, it'll be alright, but I'm not sure. I assume that they figured out how to not have that happen in stock, but I can't verify that right now. Maybe you guys can tell me whether that particular problem 
uh, happens in stock where uh, basically your thrusters are stuck and you start rotating and you can't seem to do anything about it. Big problem, really. But with the pass-through system, that's definitely a no-go. We need the thrusters to work. The whole point of the pass-through system is to make EBAs very interesting. Really, I should have a fleet of these Orion carrier planes and have different names for them, shouldn't I? Then we can pretend that uh, another one is, you know, being used and we'll alternate and fly them back from Cape Canaveral and everything. Okay, that's 4,000 as usual. RCS and separation. And we're going with this right now. Control from the little... Since we don't have a built-in part here, we need to control from that. Okay, and fairings. It's just just one set of those spherical tanks with xenon gas in. A little bit tweak scaled, but not too much. I wonder what would happen if I just dump real visual enhancements in a 1.8.1 install. It would be nice to see the ground looking a little bit better. Okay, making orbit leaves us with 2,955 meters per second, which I think is more than we had previously with the last version of this stage. And we have a little bit more RCS fuel as well. So, alright. Uh, for the subsequent maneuvers, I'll just use two engines to save ignitions. And also because the thrust is already way too much anyway. St. Louis is right there. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we can expedite this a little bit. I don't know. I think we won't get around before we the St. Louis gets there. Yeah, it'll be right past. Alright. But, yeah, maybe we can get a tangency. Okay, we'll do this minor burn, and then down here... Do a burn that'll allow us to wait around until it comes back around. Okay, that should do. We have enough. So we can probably carry a little bit more than the 20 tons we're carrying right now. Not including the fairings and everything. Uh, it's just the 20 tons in the tanks. There's also the adapter, the fairings, the that adapter there, which is actually from the Goku spacecraft the decoupler. Okay, and ignition for the big burn. Okay, well that says 2.6 kilometers there. I'm gonna turn off the RCS so it stays that way. And so we've got an encounter. We've got 627 meters per second left. And it says we only need 159 to match speeds. So continuing to be in good shape. All right, and that was one burn. I don't know if we can do the rest of RCS. 16 meters per second. 
On the other hand, I don't know if we can do with the engines, since that is going to be a really short burn. Okay, seems alright. Okay, coming into dock. Again, it has sort of a weird behavior to it, but okay. We are docked, and let's transfer to xenon gas. And this has done its job. Okay, off we go. So it's not reusable, but it's functional. Okay, that's done with. Next, I'm going to have to cook up a special module for the supplies. I think I'm going to modify the Destiny module from the ISS. That's a pass-through one that I made. Okay, I do want to demonstrate that this is legit. So here we are with a procedural tank, life support. This is the old type of procedural tank. And we have the supplies. I've dumped the supplies from this Goku pod, which has a crew capacity of four. And we have here two years, roughly two years and 270 days, which is what I normally budget for a trip to Mars. And so we have enough for four people uh, for that long. And that ends up being 28.32 tons and dry only 2.97 tons, which uh, frankly is actually a little bit light as far as I'm concerned. The Destiny module alone is 14.41 tons and about the same size. So what we'll do is we'll probably split the difference uh, a little bit. I'll, I'll lean more towards the actual Destiny module size, but obviously we won't need all of the lockers and the uh, particulars inside. Yeah, I'll, I'll just balance it out. We're only doing 50% utilization here, which accounts for the actual, you know, storage containers and also the fact that the Kerbals have to be able to pass through. So I think that's fair, 50% utilization. It's clearly about the same size and uh, in fact a little bit less on width so you can see we're leaving plenty of margin and it will be a good container for the supplies necessary for four crew members for a Mars trip so but I'm gonna redo this module so that actually has the capacity for exactly what we have here and then make it a little bit lighter compared to the regular Destiny module but certainly heavier than this tank so that is what we're going to have now. Our existing system can't send a 28-ton tank to the height that we're going for, much less uh, after I bump up the dry mass, it's probably going to be more than that. So we'll undersupply it, but we already have some supplies there. And for our first trip to Mars, we're probably not going to send four people. We'll probably send two. So that doing it halfway will be more than all right. So let me get to that, and I'll be back. Okay, so here we go with the supply module, and we are not sending the xenon gas this time. I decided that since it's only a little bit of xenon gas, about 8 tons, we'll send it with the crew. And that'll be more convenient, so we'll send as much supply as possible with this launch. And the module is filled up to about 40% capacity, and that should be enough for two people for the duration of a Mars mission. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. I've decided to name the module Endurance. Of course, other things have been named Endurance before, but I feel like a supply module in particular is a very appropriate thing to call Endurance. So, yeah, we're calling it Endurance. Sort of matching the ISS feel for module names, of course. I decided on a dry mass of 9 tons, which is heavy. I mean, of course, if you guys have been used to conducting missions with the procedural tanks holding your food, water, and oxygen, you've been lucky, um, apparently. Uh, those have been fairly light, but uh, unless you use the more modern style procedural tanks, which they, in which case they might be heavier, but yeah, so nine tons of dry mass to hold about 40 tons worth of supplies. Uh, it's uh, actually 30 ton, 30-ish tons of supplies. So right now, it, it, we're not using all of its capacity for this mission, but I wanted to future-proof it a bit. Make sure that we can have enough supplies for four. Okay, rolling. And shut down. Close enough. Separation. And 
And let's make sure we're controlling from the right place. And... Let's just start pointing properly. All right. Could get rid of the fairings before lighting that, but there it is. It's just a destiny module again, but it's now called Endurance. And you can see 40% filled. The number is basically what we had with that procedural tank. I do have a uh, hatch on this side. This side is going to attach to the existing station, so I decided to save ourselves a hatch there. Okay, and shut down. 219 by 194 ish. And we have less than before, but we're carrying just a little bit more, so we'll see how that shapes up. Hopefully, we'll be alright. But, uh, yep, the same sort of idea here. Okay, well, we're a little bit late, but ignition. Of course, we could just light the other two engines and make up the time, but this is probably safer. Well, that's a bit of a far approach, but it should be all right, hopefully. Now, once we add this supply container to the ship, we're going to have to reevaluate our Delta V situation there. It's going to have a lot more dry mass. Oh, we don't have comms. <laughs> that's strange. We have electric charge. In theory, the ship that we're approaching should be able to relay, but I guess it also doesn't have comms. Okay, we've picked it up, maybe just in time. Okay, well, that's close enough. All right, we'll wait till we get there. Okay, so almost a problem with the communications, but not too bad. Well, we're approaching from the correct end this time. Okay, it sure does wiggle around a lot though. And yeah, we've used a lot of the RCS now. Well, let's get a proper look at what's going on here. That is the situation in a nutshell. Definitely does not seem to like the thruster pla placement on this. I'll have to review that for when we formalize this as a special part in Blender. And this is not the right place to put the thrusters. Of course, we've got this load up front and not a whole lot of fuel in the back now. Okay, we've docked. So that module gets to stay with everything. And we are going to undock here. Well, we're going to decouple. Okay, that shook things a bit. <laughs> Hopefully that went right. Well, there's a lot of thruster firing on the opposite side. Let's see. Okay, let me just turn that off. There seems to be some crackenage going on. Still have a fair amount of Delta V overall. And we haven't topped off the Xenon gas, but not that that's the way we want to do everything because those units are very very slow not much thrust but we've got 1822 with the nuclear stages well nuclear stage and fuel tanks so i'll have to think about whether that's enough um is it still gonna fire stuff all over the place uh it, it's very shaky I don't know why it's so shaky. Let me say control from here. Maybe that'll help. Okay, maybe it was because of where it was controlling from before. Now it seems to be stable. Okay. A little bit of a concern there though. Oh, uh, how is the power now? The electric charge. No, it's still a huge, a huge number. I was sort of hoping that having something else docked to it would help that situation but the number has gotten even bigger it's now 14 digits <laughs> instead of 12 and uh, it's definitely a different number but it seems like every time something docks with it 
the number changes and becomes larger. It's only the electric charge. It's got to be something to do with KSP Interstellar. So... What can I say? <laughs> that is the situation there. We have, we have a bit of a problem. There is a point where the game probably won't want to load that craft anymore if the number gets too big. And that's disposed of. Okay. So, we have done... Oh, we're too far away. We have done the supplies to the St. Louis, St. Louis, and we are going to see what else we need. Uh, really, we might just need to send the crew and a little bit of xenon gas, but I'm a little bit worried about the requirements for the transfer. Let's take a look at, let's replot that now. Okay, basically 2,400. I mean, we could do a chunk of that with the ion engine. But I think we'd feel a little bit better adding another nuclear module to this. Not sure we need this section here anymore. We've got the reactors and everything that came as part of this module here, the core for NTP and solar electric propulsion, which is having the electric charge issue um, and also seems to be heating very quickly. But yeah, we might not need this bit because we don't need the solar panels and um, we could store our propellant in a smaller way. That's the RCS propellant. So I'll have to think about that. If we send another tank up here though, we're going to have to refuel it as well. We can't send a fully fueled one up at one go. Well, let me take a look at what it takes to capture around Mars given our current transfer plan. If it doesn't take too much, we might be okay, as we are now. Or we might have to rescue this on the way back, something like that. Well, we can accept that. And let's see, capturing? Not a bad transfer, it's a pretty quick one. Well, that might be troublesome for how much it takes to capture around it, though. Yeah, it's costing 4,200 uh, 4, to capture around it. That's because we're arriving, we're only taking 140 days to get there. I would like a completely different situation. I want to get there slowly. <laughs> we, I mean, we're gonna have the supplies anyway. I think we're gonna try for a plot that has mid-course adjustment and the benefit to that is that the ion engine can do a pretty good mid-course adjustment. We don't have to worry about using the nuclear engine for that. Well, I mean, that'll take a while. That'll take basically a year to get there. But is it good on the capture? Only 670. You see, if you get there slowly and take your time, it's not too bad. I mean, it was 4,000 if we get there after a trip of 140 days taking a year and you know you still get a year of hanging out there we only take 671 i think on our first try we'll just take it easy i mean currently we don't have any radiation simulations so eh, uh, maybe it's for the best um yeah so we'll try this and it doesn't leave us a whole lot in our nuclear tanks, if you will. But I think we can just send crew and go. And so we'll be sending crew a little bit closer to the actual window. Well, actually, this node here. And But we're going to have to do a lot with the ion engines. That's the downside. Coming back, maybe I should just tell it no insertion burn. But that's what we're looking. We're looking at an ejection. We'll already be in a high orbit. The problem is, is it pointed in the right direction? Uh, we're only capturing into a high orbit around Mars for this first time. So, yeah. It'll depend on a lot of things. And that's in 735 days. And that would take how long to get back? Travel 285 days, so that's a long trip too. 
I don't know. I think uh, I'll have to ponder this. Whether we need an extra tank or not. It's getting a little bit tight here. And maybe we can speed things up a bit. Uh, especially on the way back. We don't want it to take that long. So, okay. Anyway, that is the situation. We have added some stuff to our ship. And we'll see how it goes in the next episode. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.